Sonic X Shadow Generations has finally arrived, and after this game has absolutely consumed a week of my life, I suppose it's time that I finally talk about it. With all the anticipation and excitement, you truly wondered would this game live up to the hype? And after 100%ing the entirety of Shadow Generations, let me just say, yeah it did. So within this review video, I'm going to be talking all about Shadow Generations and everything that it detailed inside of the game. I'm going to be talking about the Sonic Generations remaster, however, in a different video that's hopefully up by the time you're watching this video. So if you're watching this video, be sure to go check out that video as well. Also, if this isn't obvious enough already, spoiler warnings ahead. But with that being said, let's get into my Shadow Generations review. When you first enter the Shadow Generations side, you're able to see in the title screen that there's an option to revisit Shadow's story. And this is actually a really cool detail to the game to be able to revisit Shadow's past. And especially for new players that don't know everything about Shadow so they're more informed about playing the game. You see some really cool new animations from this, but ultimately if you know Shadow's story this isn't super important to you. But hey, they finally animated Maria's death so at least we got something, right? But moving into the actual story of the game, this takes place directly after the Shadow the Hedgehog Dark Beginnings prologue, where Shadow is already aboard the Ark as he has gotten some intel alluding to the fact that Black Doom might be returning. One of the really cool details that's shown inside of some of the cutscenes in Shadow Generations is there's some points where it actually kind of fits into actual Sonic Generations, where in the first few cutscenes you can actually see Shadow talking to Rouge who is at Sonic's birthday party, and even at the end of the Space Colony Ark act you can actually see them getting sucked in by the Time Eater. Another a really great thing for the story is a lot of the references are still in here, much like Sonic Generations, which I really like to see for Shadow's story. One thing that I definitely didn't see them revisiting is the fake Chaos Emerald aboard the Space Colony Arc, which actually ends up fitting on later on down the story with Sonic as well. The way this is written where Sonic ends up taking the fake Emerald and Rouge ends up replacing it in the end is actually a really cool touch and I love the way that they decided to do this story to fit Shadow into Sonic Generations. When I was initially thinking about how they could potentially potentially put the two stories together and make it seem like they're just one big story, just different events. I never truly thought that this could potentially be the reason or the way they could do it. So super big kudos to Ian Flynn and his writing team for thinking about a reference like this. But while the story is short, this is super impactful for Shadow as a character and overall is just an amazing characterization of Shadow. One of the most rocky things in Sonic's history is the way that Shadow is characterized in games. I made an entire video ranking every single shadow and I gushed about that a bunch of just how different each shadow is. But this shadow genuinely is amazing and is one of the best that we've ever received. From being extremely stubborn to take action very quickly to seeing him absolutely be grounded by Maria at times is really amazing to see inside of this game. And seeing just how much he cares for not only Maria but also Gerald is so cool to see. But seeing how much he cares for his family and Maria and even Gerald is really heartwarming. When Shadow mentions that he's hoping to rewrite the timeline and warn Maria and Gerald about the future events that happen on the Ark, you can see Shadow really struggle on how to tell them or how he could potentially change their future. And you see that he just genuinely really wants to help them and potentially find a way where he can live a future with them, even if it isn't his timeline. The ending of the entire story is by far one of the most emotional roller coasters that you'll ever go on inside of any Sonic game. From having absolute hype moments with the Doom Wings and all the Doom powers fighting off Black Doom, to seeing Shadow come back to white space to hopefully rewrite history and saving Maria and Gerald. You can see him extremely struggle to let that go and move on. But I think that's what Shadow's character is all about and what it's always been about, is to keep pushing forward and keep moving forward no matter what. And while we see at times that Shadow has severe PTSD and regrets a lot of things that happened back on the arc, he still continues to push forward and live life. And with Maria with this one single line is a true reason on why Shadow can keep moving forward even now. Maria saying that he'll always be in his heart truly just can bring you to tears. And moving forward for future Sonic games, I think this will be a big reason that Shadow will somewhat move on from them and continue to keep moving forward. As Maria and Gerald and everyone on the Ark still live inside of him, he will continue to keep pushing forward because of them. And sure, while he might miss them at times, Shadow will continue to fight 
especially for Maria's wish. And this is really symbolized with Shadows continuing to skate forward on that big long road in white space to meet up with Sonic and friends. With the tear flying behind him and landing on Rouge's cheek, this is the big part of the story where I ended up getting somewhat emotional about the game, seeing just how much Shadow really cares about them and how much his past really meant to him. But Shadow is still a hero deep down and will continue to move forward and will continue to save everyone. This is by far one of the best ending shots we've ever received in any Sonic game. And I think this is a ending shot that people will talk about for a long, long time. The story in general is just so incredible, it's just so unfortunate of how short it actually is. But seeing Shadow revisit with his friends in Gerald and Maria, and also revisiting with some foes was a really big nostalgic feeling. Seeing him fight the likes of the Bio Lizard, Metal Overlord, Mephilus, and even Black Doom once again was so much fun. And a lot of the interactions that you actually end up getting in the game are super heartwarming as well, with even Gerald calling Shadow him his own son. I mean, if that at least doesn't make make you smile, I don't know what will in Sonic. But while the story is great, this isn't nearly some of the best parts of this entire game. The most nostalgic part of the entire generation series in Sonic and now Shadow Generations is definitely the stages. With all the stages taking place in Shadow's past but also his future like Chaos Island, it's truly amazing to see all these stages come back. And all of these stages are great. There truly is not a bad stage inside of this game. While I do think certain stages like Kingdom Valley or Chaos Island definitely are better than most of the other stages, I still go back to each of these stages and have an absolute blast with each one. And all of these stages perform genuinely amazing. With all the different paths and all the different Doom abilities that you end up using inside of this game, it makes these stages so much fun. And speedrunning them is even more fun. After playing them and learning all the different pathways and trying to get your best time on each of these stages, these stages just keep getting better and better the more you play them. One of the best things about Sonic Generations was replaying them and being able to speedrun and find your best time in each of these stages, and they were able to recapture that in Shadow Generations again. And I think these have by far some of the most replayability out of any Sonic game stages. But in Shadow Generations, Act 1 and Act 2 actually operate the opposite way of Sonic Generations. Where in Sonic Generations, Act 1 is for classic Sonic and Act 2 is for Modern Sonic, with Act 1 having more of your 2D style of stages and Act 2 having more of your 3D style of stages. For Shadow, it's actually the opposite. Act 1 is going to be more of your 3D styled stages and Act 2 is more of your 2D style. And Act 1 is definitely superior, but I was definitely taken back by the way Act 2 stages are. I am admittedly someone that doesn't really like a lot of 2D stages, especially in Generations. A lot of times I actually tread playing as Classic Sonic when replaying the game, where Modern Sonic I have an absolute blast and it's some of the best times I've ever had playing Sonic. But Shadow Generations entirely changed my opinion on that. Obviously Shadow acts more like Modern Sonic in 2D areas, but Shadow actually surprised me with a lot of his Act 2 stages. They're surprisingly really good, and a lot of that has to be thanked to a lot of the Doom powers. I'll get into more about the Doom powers in a little bit, but these are actually a lot of fun to play through. They do move a lot slower than the Act 1 stages, but I kind of like that as it kind of gets you to slow down a little bit and actually platform throughout all these stages, but also use the Doom powers in certain ways to get through the stage. And even the Chaos Control abilities allowing you to hit certain pathways, but also shed some time off of your best time. But, like I was saying, while I was really taken back and very surprised how good the Act 2 stages are, Act 1 is definitely still superior in my opinion. The Act 1 stages have such a great level design, and I think a perfect example of that is going to have to be Kingdom Valley. Kingdom Valley was my most anticipated stage that I wanted to play the most, because not only do I think 06 level design is great, but also from the gameplay that we actually seen, just how many different pathways we were able to see within those gameplays. And that definitely did not disappoint. There are so many pathways in Kingdom Valley that it makes this stage so much fun. And your first few times of playing the stage, it genuinely makes you feel like you're playing a different stage every single time. You genuinely have to run through the stage quite a few times to get the full experience of Kingdom Valley. And if there is a stage that Sega should look at to be able to potentially make other stages in the future similar to, they should definitely be looking at this stage again. As this stage is what Sonic is all about. Going fast, multiple pathways, and not necessarily just going 
straight in one line all the time. It's pretty crazy to think just how far we've come since Sonic Forces. Another amazing stage that I was actually taken quite surprised by is Chaos Island. Initially when I ran through it the first time, I actually kind of thought that this stage was the worst out of the bunch. I still stand by my opinion even at that time that all the stages are great, but I really didn't like Chaos Island at first. And a big reason for that was actually not knowing how Doom Morph worked. Doom Morph is by far one of the hardest ones to control, and like I said, I'll get to that in a little bit. But after reading some of the fine print and actually learning how to use Doom Morph, this is actually the most fun stage to run through. After playing each stage almost over 10 times at this point, Chaos Island is always the one I go back to. It's the most fun to speedrun, and it's just so goddamn well put together. But besides being able to completely run through stages at an insane speed, all of these stages are genuinely breathtaking with all the visuals. Radical Highway ended up being the last stage in the entire game, which was kind of surprising considering that a lot of stages end up transforming into what looks like Radical Highway in the middle of the stage. And I really think this is a good level design and it's really fun to speed run through as well. But besides all of that, the stage is visually breathtaking. The visuals of Radical Highway are so good, I truly can't get enough of that. And that kind of just goes for every stage, they all look really good, I just think Radical Highway looks the best out of all of them. But in general, I could not have asked for any better stages than what we got. These are some of the best set of stages we've ever received. This game truly did not have a bad stage at all. And even if you don't care about the story about Shadow Generations and just want to play the game for gameplay purposes, you are truly in for a treat with all of these stages as they are so much fun and are truly the highlight of the game. Like I said, I've played each of these stages over 10 times at this point, and I still can't get enough of them. Even recording this, I'm itching to go back and play these stages again. But like I was saying, a big part of the reason why these stages are so great have to be thanks to the powers. Not only was the 3D stages a huge success because of the powers, but also the 2D stages like I was explaining earlier. The first one you end up unlocking is actually Doom Spears. Very similar to Chaos Spear, it just allows you to shoot multiple targets, but creates for some really cool moments and allows you to hit different pathways if you end up stunning some of the enemies that have spikes on them. But if you're not careful with this, you actually have to hit some of these targets at a really fast pace. While chaos snapping it to them at the same time. So while I thought this was going to be kind of somewhat of a lackluster ability, it actually ended up being pretty fun. Another one that you end up getting is Doom Blast. I think this is going to end up being the most underrated Doom power out of all of them. While it doesn't seem like it does much other than just kicking enemies far away and teleporting to them, this actually is so much fun to do and I don't know why. Just the feeling of Shadow just absolutely kicking them and then teleporting them feels so damn good. It just screams who Shadow is, and this is exactly what I'd expect from Shadow's abilities. It really feels like you're just playing a cutscene. It feels like you're playing the cutscene from Shadow the Hedgehog. And it allows you to reach upper pathways so easily, especially in the hub world. There's a lot of times where you're able just to kick him in a certain direction, and it allows you to get up to an upper pathway to get that certain collectible. And this is such a good way to actually put collectibles in secret spots. I love this ability. You also have Doom Surf. Doom Surf is definitely an ability that can be wonky at times, especially if you hit a wall. It'll completely flip you around and you'll just kind of be stuck going that direction. But after the Metal Overlord fight, I actually ended up really liking this ability as well. The Metal Overlord fight was a fight that I didn't expect to be super good, especially being all around the Doom Surf ability. But I was actually quite surprised just how much the Doom Surf makes this boss fight so good. And also just surfing around in the hub world is one of the most fun things to do with this ability. Next up you have Doom Morph. Doom Morph is by far the hardest one to figure out, especially if you don't read the fine print of how to actually use this ability. And I've actually seen a lot of people hating on the Doom Morph because of this, because they can't figure it out. But I'm here to say stop hating on the Squid Man for a second. This is actually my personal favorite ability. I am there with you. I genuinely hated this ability when I first started using it because I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, it seemed pretty self-explanatory. You just swing with the Doom Morph, right? I mean, I've played Spider-Man, right? It can't be more complicated than that, right? But that's where I'm kind of wrong. Trying to figure out how you can be able to sling yourself directly up or to the side or being able to do it directly at it is so much fun to figure out. I genuinely wish that the Doom Morph ability was available in more stages other than Chaos Island and Radical Highway. Because slinging through stuff and then absolutely moving at an insane speed as the squid is so much fun. It's basically if you just put Splatoon and Spider-Man into one ability, it's so much fun to use. And lastly, you have the Doom Wings. The Doom Wings are one of the best abilities as well, and I know that I've said I've liked every ability at 
at this point, but they're all great. The Doom Wings are very much treated like the super form of this game, where every time there's a big moment and even in the final boss, the Doom Wings are a big point inside of that. And you're even able to activate and go back to each stages after collecting 50 rings and activating them by hitting the left and right bumpers. While I will say the only complaint that I have is it is cool that you can go back and do that, a lot of times they didn't really put a lot of pathways to be able to use the Doom Wings in past stages. The biggest bonus to it that I've seen to use it in past stages is just basically having unlimited boost or at least boost that'll regen over time. But the stages that it's actually meant for, like Radical Highway, they're so much fun to use, and I hope that Shadow keeps this ability in the future. It just kind of seems like that he won't keep these abilities at all. As at the end of all of this, it seems like his Doom Wings end up fading away and he won't use them anymore. While it is sad to potentially see them go away, I'm glad that they happened and they gave Shadow so many cool abilities. And if genuinely they decide to go back and make Shadow a playable character in a mainline Sonic game again, I would really like to see some of these abilities come back. The Doom powers are truly such a big part of the game and I absolutely loved every minute of them and they truly made the stages great. Because without the doom powers i honestly think that the stages wouldn't have been as fun as they are they wouldn't have been as replayable as they are and the same goes for the hub world i don't think the hub world would be nearly as fun without all the doom powers there truly is very rarely a moment that you're not using the doom powers inside of the hub world whether you're flying across the entire hub world, slinging on stuff, surfing in the water, you're always using this ability. This isn't even the only power inside of the game. You also have Chaos Control, which makes for some really cool shortcuts inside of the game where you're able to warp with the Chaos Control ability, but also being able to go to certain pathways depending on how well you time this ability. And not only that, this is great for speedrunning, as when you hit Chaos Control it lasts for 5 seconds, it completely stops the timer of the stage. So a lot of times when you're actually running Running through these stages, it's not necessarily running through the most optimal pathways. It's actually finding the most optimal way to gain chaos control as much as possible throughout those stages. Because if you can continue to stop time, that's going to make your time look amazing at the end of the stage. And I think this is just a really cool implement to the game, and I'm so glad that Chaos Control was done so right. Because this definitely could have been done wrong, and we've never truly been able to use Chaos Control inside of the gameplay. So them finally letting us do it, they absolutely did it right, and I hope they continue to revisit Chaos Control for Shadow again. The other thing that you have inside of Shadow Generations that's very similar to Sonic Generations is the Challenge Gates. While they do act very similar to Sonic Generations, these are a lot more fun and are executed way better than they were in Generations. There's only two per act in each stage, but all four of them end up being really fun and I really can't complain about any of them. Some of them are genuinely challenging, but the really nice thing with a lot of these is it helps you get a lot better grasp on how a lot of these Doom powers actually end up working. Like I was saying previously, is Doom Morph gave me a lot of trouble in the beginning and a lot of people are saying that they actually end up not liking the ability because of that. But one of the act one challenge gates inside of Chaos Island actually helps you kind of get a better grasp of using Doom Morph and is a big reason how I actually ended up understanding the power. Not only are these fun to use, but they actually teach you about the game as well, and I really think that Sega intended that to be how the challenge gates work. But not only that, when you get to the end of the game, you're able to activate hard mode challenge gates. So there's definitely plenty of challenge gates, and all of them are so much fun. So much so that I actually end up going back and playing some of the challenges. I can't say that for Sonic Generations. The Generation ones are fine, but at times they just are a little irritating, but also just not that fun. The challenge gates here are actually really replayable and really fun to go back to. But moving into arguably the most nostalgic part of this entire game is the boss fights. Shadow has four boss fights inside of this entire game with being Bio Lizard, Metal Overlord, Mephilus, and Devil Doom. And like I said with the stages, this game doesn't have a bad boss fight. I know I shouldn't compare, but compared to the Titan fights, these aren't the best boss fights we've received inside of the entire series, as I think the Titan fights were so much more than that. The boss fights were entirely the highlight of Sonic Frontiers, but the boss fights in this are still amazing. But one thing that this game has in boss fights over the Titan fights in Frontiers is just how cinematically stunning they are. 
These cinematics go absolutely insane and make Shadow seem unstoppable as a character. This dude absolutely bodies each of his past foes, and he does not give a damn. It generally feels like you're playing a movie at times when you're fighting all of these bosses and they're so much fun. The Bio Lizard in my personal opinion is my least favorite of the fights, but it's a really good start of all the boss fights, and generally is the most nostalgic as it's most similar to his Sonic Adventure 2 boss fight as well, but also maintaining a more new style to him. It overall is just a really a solid starting boss fight. But that's the thing with all these boss fights is they all have a final boss feel to them. And Bio Lizard is no shy to that. This genuinely kind of feels like it could be a final boss fight. Metal Overlord actually ended up surprisingly with how good it actually ended up being. I actually thought this boss fight was going to be the worst out of the bunch in my personal opinion, but I was dead wrong in that theory. This boss fight has a really good way to show off the Doom Surf and what it's all about, and is truly the best moment of using that ability. But while this boss boss fight is definitely a very easy boss fight, this is an extremely hard S rank at first. It took me a solid few tries to actually S rank this boss, because if you don't know all the optimal pathways of hitting Metal Overlord, it's actually kind of hard to S rank this. If someone S ranked this on their first try of actually playing against Metal Overlord, I would kind of be surprised. And you should definitely give yourself a pat on the back for that one. And I also love Metal Overlord's new voice, as his voice actor did an amazing job with him as well. But moving into the next boss fight and my personal favorite in Mephilus. For those that have been around on the channel for a while, they understand my love for Mephilus and how much I wanted him to return, and man did they not let me down. This is by far the best boss fight with having some really cool voice lines from Mephilus and also a lot of nostalgic lines, but this boss fight also has multiple phases and some really cool cinematic scenes with Shadow. And this also has to be thanks to the work of Robbie Damon, the new voice actor for Mephilus. While Mephilus, a big reason on why I loved him was how Dan Green actually ended up delivering Mephilus in a lot of cutscenes inside of 06, and Robbie Damon definitely has a different style of voicing Mephilus, he actually did an amazing job at Mephilus. Mephilus says a lot of old lines that he says in 06, but a lot of times you can hear the desperation in his voice, as saying that he wants to exist and that's all that he wants is just to simply exist. He doesn't want to go back to not existing anymore. And just hearing that desperation in his voice, if given the chance again, I think Robbie Damon could do real justice for Mephilus if they brought him back. And I'm definitely very pleased with the voice actor they decided to choose with him. While I think that Dan Green does do a little bit better in my opinion, I don't want to compare the two as they did have completely different styles of Mephilus. Robbie Damon still did an amazing job, and I hope that we continue to get him for Mephilus if he comes back again. But this is also the coolest ending to any of the bosses inside of the game. Seeing Shadow Surf on Mephilus' little minions, and then also sealing him after punching him directly into the ground in the Scepter of Darkness is so badass. This boss fight is perfection, and I could not have asked for any better boss fight in any Sonic game. This will by far, in my opinion, go down as one of the best boss fights in Sonic's history. And this just further proves my point that I've said in the past of just how good of a character Mephilus is. He has the abilities, he has now again the amazing voices, we need him to come back in the mainline Sonic game, please Sega. But I can't complain, we finally got him back, so I'm gonna chill on my whole Mephilus rant for now. But not only that being an amazing boss fight, the final boss of the entire game being Devil Doom, being one of the best final bosses that we've ever received, and this is even without Super Shadow. You see Shadow use damn near every ability inside of this game, inside of this boss fight. If there is ever in the future an argument on whether they should bring back the Doom Wings, they need to look at this boss fight and see just how badass and cool this boss fight is because because of the wings. Flying through Radical Highway to fight Devil Doom is so much fun, and this boss fight, gameplay wise, cinematic wise, music wise, is incredible. The moment you hear the All Hail Shadow remix come back, you are absolutely so damn hyped. This is exactly what a final boss needs to be in future Sonic games. This is on par, in my opinion, with the Titan fights. In my opinion, the Titan fights are by far the best boss fight in terms of gameplay and music that we've ever received in any Sonic game, period. This gives it a run for its money, and my opinion might change with that in the future. This is so much fun, using all the abilities, flying through Radical Highway, and you're not even using Super Shadow. That's insane to me. Not even having Super Shadow involved in this in 
any way and you absolutely knocked it out of the park with this this is incredible sega and again like i said earlier in the video i know i've done this a few times now but if you are Considering playing this game, even just for the gameplay, and you don't give a damn about the story, not only are the stages incredible, not only are the powers incredible, not only are the challenge gates incredible, but the boss fights as well. Like, what more could you ask from a Sonic game or any platform game? This game is entirely peak. And I know people sling around the word peak like it's nothing these days, but this game is exactly what that is, is it's peak. And I'm not even done yet. You not only have all of the main things that we talked about with story, stage, power, challenge gates, boss fights, you also have the best hub world we've received in any Sonic game. And it's not even close. Sonic Frontiers open world doesn't compare. Sonic Unleashed hub worlds don't compare. Soliana doesn't compare in 06. Nothing compares to White Space and Shadow Generations, and it is truly the highlight of the game in my opinion. It makes exploring so much fun. Running around this entire hub world with using the different abilities as you unlock them is so much fun. And not only are you using all of these abilities, you're also searching for everything to be able to 100% this game. You have to go get all the medallions inside of the stages that make those stages completely replayable again, and then going back to the hub world and finding each individual chest for not only artwork, game explanations, and music. And finding all these chests is genuinely fun. A lot of times people might think it's annoying to find certain parts or pieces inside of a hub world. It's fun to find these chests because they are in such cool areas and they're in really sneaky areas at times too. Like you truly have to think about what you're doing to find each individual chest. But not only when you're searching for the chests, you're also searching for the Orbot and Cubot spaceship parts. And this is where it actually kind of got hard at times to find all the parts. I was stuck on 79 parts for like an hour. I could not find the last part. And it was in the most dumb area imaginable. It was in the Mephilus area, of course, right? Being the Mephilus guy I am, you'd think I would check that one area for the last part, but I didn't. Even though the only thing that this truly unlocks is the remixed version of the Bio Lizard fight supporting me from Sonic Forces, it's so much fun to just search around for all of these parts. It's the highlight of the game, and 100%ing the game is so much fun, and this is the most fun I've had 100%ing any game. The only other one that I could potentially even compare to 100%ing is potentially Mario Odyssey. Mario Odyssey's 100% is an absolute blast, and if you haven't played that game or even 100% of that game, please go do so because it's one of the best games to 100% in history. My opinion still stands for this game, though, as I think 100%ing this game is incredible. I absolutely loved every moment of exploring this hub world. Talking and interacting and having those individual lines with each of the characters around the hub world, but also finding all of the music and all the different chests and the Orbot and Cubot parts was an absolute blast, and I can't wait to do it again. A lot of times when I play games, I will initially 100% them as I want the full entire experience from any game that's even not a Sonic game. Whether that be a Mario game, a Zelda game, a Pokemon game, any of those. That's just who I am as a gamer. Usually when I go back to play those games, I won't 100% them again because of how tedious or difficult it is to 100% certain games. While the Orbot and Cubot parts can be annoying to find, or even trying to find that last chest at times can be annoying, I never once felt like I wasn't having fun playing the game. Being able to activate the Doom Wings and absolutely fly around and see the entire world was so much fun. And generally, this hub world fixes a lot of the issues I had with Sonic Frontiers. A lot of the issues that I had with Sonic Frontiers is the the world's feeling so empty. While they were big and while there were multiple islands to completely run through, there wasn't a lot to do. In this, you have collectibles, you have different events, you have the challenge gates, and the stages inside of the hub world. It completely entirely fixes my biggest issue with Sonic Frontiers is just how empty the worlds felt in that game. And it's crazy to think that Sonic Frontiers wasn't ultimately all that long ago and Sega is already fixing that problem that people had with that game. I can't wait to see what they do for future hub worlds if this is a, even a taste of what we're going to get in another mainline Sonic game for a hub world. Whether that be Sonic Frontiers 2, Shadow Generations 2, whatever they decide to do, I can't wait to see it. As this, hands down, by far, I don't care what anybody says, is the best hub world we've ever received in Sonic, period. And then lastly, I'll finally talk about my few complaints about the game. 
I think this game is incredible, and I'll get to what my personal rating of the game is in just a second. But my only complaints about this game is one, they revealed absolutely every stage before the game came out. We knew that the Space Colony arc was going to be in the game. We knew that Rail Canyon, Kingdom Valley, Chaos Island, Sunset Heights, and Radical Highway were all going to be in the game. I thought there was going to be a little bit more than that, and I thought there was going to be a secret stage or two. I knew that that was most of the stages, and I didn't have high hopes for there being any other stages, but I wish that they would have kept some of them a mystery. Imagine if they kept Chaos Island a mystery. Imagine if they kept Kingdom Valley a mystery. That would have been so much fun and it would have created a lot of hype moments while playing through the game and would have created a lot of excitement to see what's going to happen in the future of as you're moving through the game. But ultimately, I can't complain as this game does genuinely feel just as long as Generations or a little shorter than it. They definitely gave us more than enough stages, I just wish that it wasn't all revealed. The second thing that I'll make a complaint about is just not being long enough. I played this in one sitting. The entire game all the way through, from beginning to end of the story, in one sitting. It only took me like three to four hours. I was on the edge of my seat because of how great the story was, but also being able to run through all the stages and also just feeling like a kid again while playing all these stages was such an amazing feeling. I never wanted it to end. Having a game that is this well put together when it comes to all the things that we've explained already in this video would have been amazing to see in like a 10 to 20 hour game. If this game was the length of Frontiers, I can't imagine what they'd be able to accomplish. But at the end of the day, I understand that this is an add-on to Sonic Generations. I, we shouldn't have expected it to be very long. I just wish it was longer because now I want so much more, right? But I truly can't complain. And if those are my only complaints about this game, this game overall did amazing. And I think this is by far one of the best Sonic games that we've ever had. And I think this is a Sonic game we will continue to go back for years and years. And I think this is a Sonic game that we will continue to talk about for years and years. And the thing is, we're not even done yet. We still have DLC coming out for this game in December. We already have the movie pack coming out with a whole new stage and a whole new skin for Shadow. And we still even have Sonic Movie 3. There's so much Sonic left to be had inside of this year, I can't wait. This game was everything I wanted it to be and then some. I was never once disappointed in this game in any way. Would I have liked stuff to be more surprising? Yes. Would I have liked this game to be longer? Of course. But this game truly was incredible, and if you're in any way a Sonic fan or just a platforming game fan, you need to be playing this game. And if you haven't played Sonic Generations yet, what better time to do it than now? Because Sonic Generations alone without Shadow Generations is still one of the best Sonic games to date, even today. Shadow Generations just makes it even better, and putting those two games into one big pack slash game, you can't get much better than that. And I'm gonna give this a well-deserved rating of a 9 out of 10. My opinion might even change within these next coming weeks or months or even years that this game might just genuinely be a 10 out of 10 for me because of how much fun I have and I'm continuing to still have fun. This game is just everything I wanted it to be and truly they did not let me down. I seriously had worries when they decided to do a Shadow only game. Shadow the Hedgehog was a fine game, but the way they were going about it with revisiting Shadow's past with Generations truly got me concerned, because if they messed it up, it could have been horrible for Shadow as a character. But they did the opposite of that. They made something so amazing that makes me crave more of Shadow in games. Shadow is already one of my favorite characters inside of the entire Sonic series, and I think most people watching this will agree that he's one of the best. But I truly think that this game and how well it's even selling now with already selling 1 million copies within the first 3 days, this is going to continue to bring Shadow back in not only games, shows, movies, comics, different pieces of merchandise, Shadow is back, and Shadow is here to stay. I would like to genuinely say thank you Sega and Sonic Team, Takashi Azuka, Ian Flynn, all of the people that were involved with this game for making such an amazing game. I could not have asked for anything better and I genuinely don't have any complaints with the game. This game is going to continue to keep getting better with the DLCs, learning different strategies to go through stages, and now even mods are starting to come out for the game. The modding scene in my opinion I think is going to end up being just as big as what Sonic Generations was back in 2011. I can't wait to see what the fans do with this game with all the modding and genuinely just see people speedrunning this game. I can't get enough of this game, man. It's so great. 
So if you have not played this game, please go play it. It is incredible and you will not be disappointed. But potentially for one lucky person who has not received the game, I'm going to be announcing a giveaway right here right now. I'm going to be giving away one Steam copy of this game alongside a classic Sonic Jam skin code. And it's super easy to enter the giveaway, and especially if you're here early. All you need to do to enter the giveaway for Sonic X Shadow Generations and the classic Sonic Jam skin code on Steam is simply put your favorite shadow quote on the comments below whether it be from a game, movie, show, comic, or even your favorite YouTube quote alongside your Twitter handle or your Discord handle so I'm able to reach out to you with the code. The comment with the most likes with your shadow quote in 48 hours of this video posting, that's right, two days, will be the winner of the code and the winner of Sonic X Shadow Generations alongside your classic Sonic Jam skin code. So, best of luck to everyone who is going to decide to enter the giveaway and put a comment down below. The comment with the most likes after 48 hours will be the winner, and I will be reaching out to you with a code for the game and the Sonic Jam skin. But with that being said, guys, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Also, P.S. because I forgot to mention, go watch the Sonic Generations Remaster review video that uh, hopefully is out by the time that you're hearing this. Okay, bye.